Animations are extremely important. You want to have them in your application because they allow your user to know what he just did and where he is in your application. So it's more than a little bonus. In this video and some other videos in this series here, I want to show you how to add some animations, some basic animations to your React.js application. Now before we dive deeper into the specific tools React offers you, it's important to understand how CSS animations work without React, so without using any React specific tools. In this video we're going to build this little application using the material CSS framework with this card which we can flip or slide. So here I'm not using the transition element or attribute I used in the last video, but I'm using the built-in CSS animate attribute and the CSS animations. Let's have a look how these work in this video. I'm back in my very basic React application. It's pretty much the same as before. I still have my card and on this card I have my two buttons, flip and slide now. I don't have any styles applied to this card besides the CSS framework styles, so the material styles here. I do have some event listeners when I click on the button where I simply change my state a bit, but all I do have in my state are the slide and flip properties, which are both set to false initially and then can be switched to true or false when I click the button to do an animation. But no animation is triggered right now. This is the part we have to do. Now, since this is all set up, let's start by understanding how CSS animations work. The difference to transitions, which we saw in the last video is that now we don't tell CSS, please do a style change over a specific time period, but instead we tell CSS, hey, we get this specific animation, please execute this animation. That's a clear difference. We're not changing a style and tell it to do that over time. We're explicitly telling it, please do that animation. And the animation we're setting up gives us more flexibility than the transition element or attribute we used before. Not only that, it also gives us some opportunities or possibilities we didn't have before. So let's see how to set up such uh, animation, such a CSS animation. I'll start with the slide animation. And I want to start or set this up in the index.html file where I set up some style tags here, but no styles in between. I'm just doing this here to not pollute my main.js file with styles. So as I want to start with the slide animation, the question is how do we tell CSS that we want to animate a specific element? Well, we do that by simply adding a class which has the animation style attached to it. So here I'll create a new class called slide and all this class does is it attaches the animation element or attribute here. Now be aware you could add any normal CSS style you want. This is a normal CSS class here. So you could set the font size whatever you like. You're not limited to attaching an animation here. The animation I want to do here is let's say slide and we will have to create it on our own because there is no built-in slide animation. Then you can also add some other attributes here. This could be for example the length of this animation. You can dynamically change this. So let's say you want to slide over one second then the easing function and here let's say we want to ease in and then you can also specify the position this element should have when the animation finishes. So with a transition in the last video, you always had the, well, new value as a final result. So if we change the opacity and simply set up a transition of one second, then it would slowly fade in or fade out, but then it would keep this status. It would stay faded in or faded out. Now with the animation, the default is to revert it. So if we slide the element, then after finishing the animation, it will jump back. That could be the desired behavior, but it could also not be. So if you want to keep the final state and say the element should stay where I animated it to, then you have to add four words here. This simply tells CSS, keep the final animation state. Alternative values would be revert or alternate, which allows you to replay 
the animation. Then you could also specify how often you want to do this. Like alternate two would tell CSS, do the animation twice and simply alternate. So slide to the right, slide to the left, finished. That would be another choice. Now here I'll choose four words to stick to the final result. If you want to learn more about CSS animations, I strongly check out one of the many tutorials you can find on the web which dives deeper into this and the attributes you can set up here. I only want to give a basic introduction here so that we're able to use them with React.js later on. Now the issue we have here is this slide animation here doesn't exist yet, so we have to create it. Specifically, we will create a couple of keyframes, which are individual points during the animation, where we can specifically tell CSS which attribute should have which value at which point of time. So that is really flexible and why the animation attribute here gives us a broader flexibility than the transition element we used in the last video. So here I will add new keyframes and I do this with add keyframes. This is normal CSS code. And here I'll name it slide since this is the name I chose above here in my slide class for the animation. Now to set up keyframes we got a couple of options. The easiest way is to set up from and then to like this. And as you might imagine you can set up these styles you want to start at in the from part and then the styles you want to have at the end in the to part. And you can animate multiple styles. You can even be more specific than that. You can work with percentages. So you could say 0%, which is the same as from, so at the start. And then you could add 50%, which is in the middle. And then of course you could add 100%, which is at the end. And you can also add any other percentages in between, not just these three. So here I'll stick to 0 and 100%, even though that's the same as from and to. And then since you want to slide here, what I want to do is I want to transform. So this is the default transform attribute, normal CSS attribute here. And I want to translate X, which means move it on the X axis, not Y axis, X axis. And I want to start at 0%, which is the position the element by default has. So it means start at the position the element has anyways. But then I want to animate it to another position which is why I add transform, translate X, and then let's say 80 pixels, which will move it to the right 80 pixels. You could of course always use 100% here to move it by the width of the element, or 1000 pixels, or even more, whatever you like. So choose the width you want to choose here. This will be the distance it will slide over. With this we set up the slide animation and any element which has the slide class will now perform this animation. I can show this to you by attaching the slide class to our card here. Oops, that's the card. So let me add slide here and if we now reload the page, you see it slide over. That's nice, but we want to trigger this when clicking this button and not when loading the page. Well, maybe you want to do this when loading the page, but I don't want to do it here. So I want to dynamically add this class here and not always. So I want to add this class when this slide button here was clicked, which will then set the slide property in our state to true. So I can use the slide property in the state to determine if we should slide or not, if we should add this class or not. Therefore, I will go to this class name here and change it a bit. I will wrap it in curly braces to take control via React.js. And then I want to add my conditional classes to this string. The first thing I'll do is I'll add a white space at the end. Otherwise I would attach my class name right next to this class name and build a new class name which doesn't exist. So make sure to have a white space here. Then I'll add a plus to concatenate something to that string. And the thing I want to concatenate here is simply if this state slide, this is just a check, if that is true, then I want to attach the slide class, otherwise attach nothing. So I'm using this ternary expression here to check if slide is set to true 
If yes, I will add slide to that string. If no, I will add nothing to that string. So the slide class will only be added if I click this button. If I save this and go back, you see upon reloading it's not sliding, but once I click this button it does slide. Notice that it doesn't slide back if I click here since I haven't implemented this functionality, but you see it slides over when I click the button. Awesome. Now I want to achieve the same for the flip button here. So in order to do this, I will go back to the index.html file and I need to add a new animation here, the flip animation. So here I'll first add a new class and I'll name it flip. Of course these names are totally up to you. I'll again add the animation attribute and I will name this animation flip. Also this name is up to you. Let's flip it over two seconds here and ease it out. And now let's say alternate twice to flip it over and flip it back. Notice the difference to reword is that with reword it would snap back, whereas with alternate two it will smoothly animate. So let's build the keyframes or set up the keyframes for this flip animation. Here I will also use 0% and 100% even though you could use from and to of course as before. And when flipping I also want to transform the element. But now I won't transform the position, I'm not moving it on the x or y axis. Instead I will rotate it. And here we can also rotate x, which means rotate over the x axis, which means towards you or away from you or rotate y which will rotate it like this so x y awesome yeah really cool you can see me here otherwise this would have been impossible so rotate y and then here you pass the degrees by which you want to rotate well i want to rotate by zero degrees initially because i want to keep it in the position it has but once we reach 100 percent so at the end of the animation I want to rotate it to 180 degree so that we have flipped it. Now with that we set up the flip animation. I can now do the same as with the slide animation. I want to conditionally attach this class. So I'm copying this, pasting it in here, but now instead of slide I'll use the flip property and attach the flip class. Also notice that when clicking slide I set flip to false and when clicking flip I set slide to false. So then we can re-click the other animation. If I save this, app should already have been loaded, I can click flip. I can now wait, it flips back. I can click this again but this doesn't do anything because the flip class already is applied. I have to slide first, which will remove this. Of course, you can take this as a challenge and change this. So, this is the animation I got here. And with that, you got the basics about how transitions and animations work. If you need even further basics, definitely check out some additional tutorials on that. I'll also include some links in the video description, which should help you with that. With that, let's move on and learn about some React.js specific tools which support us when using animations in a React.js application.